So today's video is about these patterns and I want to show you how, although you can construct it from video number 38, um, I want to show you how it can also be constructed by today's video which is 43 and you can see there's an efficiency in how many fewer lines there are in this and by using circles and drawing on the lines of the pattern you can um, achieve a lot more from a simpler grid. I'd like to credit uh, two people for me being able to get to this point, having drawn these many, many times over the years and making the connections. So firstly, Muhammad Al Janabi. Um, I'll connect to his YouTube channel and his um, details in his Facebook group. But this idea that one grid leads to many patterns, it didn't occur to me when I first started this. And when he kind of talked about it in his videos, those images of one pattern and another pattern, another pattern, all coming together, it was mind blowing. So um, since then, I always have tried to piece together things I know and put them together into um, a collection or a family of patterns. I'd like to mention Ali Reza Servdalir. He shares a lot of his constructions on Instagram, on Facebook and on uh, Telegram. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I said like that, but um, I'm sure this is of that family and um, it was through his constructions that I was able to make the connections to this and so on. So um, there's a lot of free information out there, please make use of it and if it doesn't make sense straight away, still try and make sense of what you can and later on it will start clicking. Okay, It's a really vast, vast um, area of study, these patterns. And sometimes things might not click straight away, maybe not 100%, but you'll get there, I promise. Mm. Okay, so look at this very jazzy little piece of paper I've made for you. Um, so a radius of six centimeters laid out with rectangles like so, eight of them. So that's the tile, will give you this pattern. Can you see? Yeah, four and then another four. Um, a radius of eight centimeters, so going a little bit larger will give you Oh, hello. I think it will give you this pattern. Or will it give you this pattern? Yes, this one. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And if you want to go larger, so 10 centimeter radius. So if we look at this first one where we're going three along, one, two, three. And if you want to do one like so, there's one, two, three, four. And then finally, I know people love a hexagonal tile, me too. So this one, the way to think about it is you would use the hexagonal tile and uh, it would be one at the centre and then half all the way around. Um, I'm sure you can do it as a uh, rectangular one as well. Let me just draw that up for you. That dodgy drawing, if I just go over it, uh, you can see, this is on tracing. Just as you're doing it, if you just notice that in each corner there's a star, it will work. The construction begin. So approximately in your page, in the middle, a horizontal line and mark its center. You can measure the width and then just half it. Remember mine is of a size that you can see as opposed to one that I'm going to tile. So firstly your circle, using the same radius, put it carefully on the intersection on the left and on the right and just a, a mark of that distance above and below and do the same on the other side. There's not much compass action <laughs> initially but they will be in a bit. Okay so next we're going to draw a six pointed star. So these three lines will be the triangle pointing this way and these three lines will be the triangle pointing that way. You can also draw them as pairs of parallel lines. Uh, my favorite line has to be, you know, the 90% of the job is measuring, checking, adjusting, and 10% is the drawing. <laughs> Now my tile that I'm going to repeat is going to be a rectangle. Of course, you don't have to do the same and I'll explain the decisions you can make later. And also to show how minimal you can be for the early or the first construction, I'm not going to put in the other two sides of the hexagon just yet. Okay, so this line that is the vertical, 
I'm using the points on the hexagon there and there and making sure it goes through the centre and make sure this line hits the top and bottom of the circle. It's really vital. Um, we'll do the same this way, although we don't need to extend it to the edge. Might as well. Finally, we're going to do the diagonals of the rectangle. It's now being divided equally into three. Now that's a corner, so there's 90 degrees. If it was a hole, that section could be divided into 12 with not too much effort. And the same for these. So the centre has been divided into 12. So at the centre we always have a full um, a drawing of the shape that's at the centre. And in the corners it will be just a quarter. Uh, move is to take this corner and draw a line that reaches this corner. And we want to highlight two points when we do that. So it's where it cuts this and this intersection. Um, 10 o'clock if you like, 7 o'clock if you like. Next thing we're going to do is put in our proportioning circle. I wish them to be red. But hold on, let's concentrate. Oh, not bad. Okay, so the first circle and then that same radius, now that you've got it carefully, you're going to centre it um, on each corner. Okay, so we're going to pick out our first pattern on tracing paper and let's attach the masking tape so it does not move. Let's also detack it so that it's not going to rip the paper. So the first thing is I'm going to indicate the corners of my rectangle. Um, I prefer a rectangle and tracing and tiling the pattern so that people can um, get to the painting part a little bit more quickly but you can you know you don't have to do it like this you could do a hexagonal repeat okay uh, you could draw more of a repeat um, okay so the first line we're going to do is going to go through these three points and the other line is going to go through these so this pattern, when you see it, this feature of it kind of disappears. The fact that it's basically crosses and the fact that that line is the same length as that and that and that. And then they meet at 90 degrees. OK, let's do the one on the other side and work our way around, putting in the crosses wherever we find them. And also anywhere where there's a half cross, putting that in. So this will come to this point. We'll come to this point and we'll have our first completed shape which is a shield and this is our quarter star so if we carry on working our way around And there it is. I mean, try and imagine it without the smudges. I hope you can't see them actually, unless you're watching on, what is it, HD times. And you can draw this pattern in a number of ways. And I keep having to emphasize this, and I like to emphasize this. The video that initially I did um, for this family of patterns was completely different, a whole bunch of lines. So this one is our first. So I call this pattern A actually. Let's move on. Okay, for us to continue, we need to draw some additional lines. The first is drawing the sides of the largest well, that previous one that we just drew. We didn't need it. So now we've got it. Just picture this. If you did circles here, each of these corners, can you see there's four um, angles of 30 degrees? Same here, you could draw this circle here, you could draw this circle here. Before you know it, you're repeating the pattern in a hex, which is totally delicious and lovely, but we're not doing it. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw small circles that sit between these um, larger circles. This is where my compass is going to be tested to its limit. So let's bear with me. You bear with me, I bear with me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so. 
I'm checking it there it sits it hits both circles I'm gonna check it at the bottom it should hit both circles it is I'm gonna do one more check I would recommend checking them in all the places okay now I'm ready to commit actually so we only need half circles on the sides oh, very rare that I do a cute little half circle so I'm gonna still check it before I draw it so this underlying grid is complete and from this we're going to generate four patterns count those four okay so i've already attached the tracing paper put the crosses down and we're going to draw the second um family of patterns starting with the first one of them we're going to use the circles a little bit differently we're going to use just two of the points on it okay so i'm going to put in a cross now these two i'm lining up but you're also lining up three divisions along and you're also lining up this one and I'm going to do it one at a time. This one is going to go from here back through this, and then I'm going to count one, two, three divisions, so it'll land here. Okay, so what do we have? We have that 90 degree crossing pair of lines. Okay, so you've got the star now, and as we repeat what we've done in the corners, um, you will see the shapes coming together. Now the reason why I did this line is when I do this one, you can use that intersection there to go into the drawing. And these two lines in the corner literally just connect the loose ends to get the drum shape. Okay, so for this one, you've got two points here. And for this one, you can use this. Okay, so this is pattern number one. Okay, so I'm going to call it B1. And when I attach the other tracing papers, we're going to add in the lines we need to get B2 and B3 and so on. So let's put this down. And the difference between this and the next is you're just going to outline the hexagons or quarter hexagons that are also in this underlying grid. And it's really important that you don't forget these two sides. They are part of the pattern. So when you join the tiles seamlessly to each other, you will erase the crosses, but these are part of the pattern. So that is B2. So I've just added another layer of tracing paper and that will give us, oopsie, the third pattern. And the third pattern is in fact rather easy it gives only three lines to draw and there we have b3 okay so we've done a we've done b1 two and three now we're going to do pattern c and um, we're treating these circles differently each of them will contain a square either a full square or a quarter of a square so we're going to treat our circles as the only areas we're allowed to work in and then extend into the larger circle like so so those two sides are pairs of parallel lines and then when we do the other sides 
extend into the large. Circle. <laughs> so that one extends up. And that one extends down. When you've got the full circle, just notice how you can still go across the drawing. And I'm just doing the whole thing. Okay, so that is in the final smudge tastic pattern. So, this is our final underlying grid. Initially, we drew our um, six pointed star, which I sometimes call 90 degree star um, because each corner is 90 degrees. Um, also, you can call it 12, 3, and 6. 1.5 is slightly more accurate in polygon notation. It's used in maths. First pattern, which I've never painted. Need to fix that. And then we added those little circles. So this is when we did arrive at this as our final underlying grid. We drew this first pattern. So this one is, should we call it B1? Let's do that. B1. And you could have this as a option let's put it in brackets if you like and prefer hexagonal shapes and um, then we added some lines actually no no let's do you want to see the examples of b1 let's see them so this is my paintings of b1 all different sizes and different paints you know there's no right and wrong there's literally wrong here it's <laughs> so bad but what i mean is i feel some people are really fearful i just draw just paint what's the worst that can happen Okay, before we get into that beauty, this is what we ha had as our template and a little swift manoeuvre. So this is B2 and this is also B2. And you can see more of the hexagons around it in this. And let's see. So that's clearly new paints day. I've painted it twice, same paints. <laughs> Owls within each other. This looks like a bookmark for massive book no it's not it's from a turkish minbar where this pattern is carved into the wood oh sorry the stone on the side not bookmark or giant book and then the third pattern this is the tile as we know it so this is b3 and this is also b3 brackets and we just added the diagonals and here you can see actually oh, that's how it should be <laughs> the diagonals are full in terms of the hexagon here it was just chopped so not convincing as hexagons, um, diagonals. And this is the fella I like. This is the fella where I saw Ruth's painting and tried to have a go, it was just not very good. Then we did this. And um, what am I calling this? Pattern C, star square, triagonal, tri trigonal, trigonal, trigonal shape. Need to work on that so that's what i'm referring to i want to look at this shape quite closely so one of the earlier times i constructed it you're going to see this in a second um this was smaller and this was bigger so what you'll find across the islamic lands is sometimes there are variations that don't fit the pattern and um, they were made sometimes hundreds of years ago sometimes they were recent sometimes they're errors but it's nice to notice and be aware of them so this one has the correct proportions for this family this one, can you see it's a much skinnier uh, shape, or is it, is it, oh, we'll see one in a second where it's not quite right, but I treated it differently here. Um, here's another one where the tile is smaller, can you see how small it is when it's repeating, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, this one definitely has smaller tiles, but this is the most time consuming piece of artwork I ever made, okay, maybe not, but um, all the floral stuff takes forever. So I'll leave you with that and um, have a go, enjoy. <laughs> 